uh, today's session is uh, how to apply a web security testing guide. Because we have seen that there's so much of resource available on the internet, but what is the relevant one for us? And especially there are a lot of people who ask uh, how to get started with the pen testing, how to get started with the web security testing. So how, when I was introduced to OWASP, it was not the community, it was the web security testing guide, which was like a long time back. Uh, but that time, my assumption was that there is only OWASP security testing guide and that's all. I didn't know that there's a huge community of researcher out there. Uh, slowly and steadily, I started getting involved in the community. Now, moving on to the topic, how this can be useful or uh, how this testing guide can be useful for people. Starting off with security specialists or the people who are getting started with uh, security. So we can use this guide in combination with other techniques that we know, or we can just get started with it because it has a, a framework. It the guide talks about the basics, uh, especially uh, what are robots, .txt file, or how to do the information gathering. And there is so much detail out there. It's not just that you straight jump into pen testing, but then it talks about basics. It talks about clearing all those uh, untouched points which needs to be considered. Similarly, for uh, software testers or QAs, we can use this guide uh, as the set of test cases, which may be applying to application, which maybe we be applying to the applications. So we can catch those vulnerabilities, identify those vulnerability early, and save consider um, consider that considering the amount of time that we generally spend in fixing it after the security team provides us. So now here we can find it early because we know, okay, this is the thing that we should be testing at least to a considerable uh, uh, amount of time that we can save here. Now, how about developers? Can they use it? Absolutely, why not? So uh, for developers, these tests uh, can be used as part of the normal code and unit testing procedures because the guy talks about uh, multiple details, like what could go wrong? If we don't, have, if we have this vulnerability, what is the impact? How can we fix it? So it talks about all those areas, and for project managers as well, they can consider this uh, for the reason that uh, this guide exists and security issues also exist. So they, it can give a brief idea to the project managers as well because they talk day in and day out about security uh, if they are security project managers and if they don't have. Uh, if they don't get the understanding, it's sometimes really challenging. So this guide really, really helps. I've seen my friends who are project managers, they have got really benefited by using the testing guide. Now, when we talk about testing, what kind of testings do we have? We have a passive testing, or like we can categorize in multiple ways, but I generally say that it can be passive testing and active testing. Now, during the passive testing, um, security researchers or testers try and understand the application's logic and try and explore the application. Just the basic exploration, trying to figure out the headers, parameters, cookie section, trying to gather the information, or there are some pages which are uh, which might be available over the internet. So just the passive scrubbing that happens. So uh, in the active testing, but we as a security researcher begin to use the methodology uh, which are described in different sections or the methodology that we have. Okay, this is a thing that can be used in testing. These are the things that should be used for testing. These are my test cases that I should be running or I, I want to run on the applications. So it could be uh, configuration management, identifying uh, if there are any uh, configuration issues on the web, web, web application or input validation testing, uh, finding the uh, if there are uh, errors which have been handled properly, if there are any cryptography issues, business logic testing, client side testing, authentication, authorization testing, session management testing. So like the list is like endless. So we can go on and on. So this, this guide touches all those unsung areas. So uh, the testing guide also describes in detail both the general testing framework and the techniques required to implement the framework in practice. Now, this can be taken as a framework and it, it is basically a framework, but then you can build on top of it. Because when we start talking about web app pen testing, when we talk about DevOps with security, all those things need to have a framework. 
this can be taken into consideration, especially from the side wherein we do the offensive, uh, offensive testing on our own application. There are multiple resources I'll talk about during the journey. Some would be on the defensive side. Okay, why this and why not the other one? Uh, so there are multiple chapters which are there. So chapter three presents like the OWASP testing framework and explains the whole techniques and task in relation uh, to the uh, different phases that we have as part of the SDLC. And chapter four actually that's the one that covers how to test for specific vulnerabilities like SQL injections, code injection, uh, and do other test cases. Now, I wanna talk about that, how this can be helpful. Think about, uh, there's a form. And first we need to find a form in an application that is there. Once, the, once we've found the form, we need to submit that form. Now, once we submit the form, Either we can do it uh, by authenticated or we don't have credentials for it. If, if the form doesn't allow uh, the users who are, not on the, uh, uh, who are unauthenticated, uh, they'll just be removed from the whole cycle. Now, once they authenticate, what's the user ID? What's the session, whether the session is going to persist, the user is going to log in for a longer period of time, whether the data is being validated, what the user has provided. If it's a registration form, then they might be providing uh, all the relevant details like uh, name, first name, last name, uh, address, phone number, email address, so many other details being captured. And once the form is filled, is there any error that's coming as part of the whole process? Are there anything, uh, any error that's being printed on the user uh, console or on the user browser? Now, if that's fine, how about the cryptography being used? Are we using a, a weak cryptography? And which is revealing some information, which is actually putting the application to uh, in the hands of hackers or malicious users. Not the hackers, but yes, malicious hackers or the people who don't have the right intent. Now, once that's there, the input might be reflecting back on the client screen. If it's a registration form, we will create the registration and then there will be a, a, a profile that will be created. And once that's there, are there any client side issues? So. If you've seen the whole life cycle, this cycle talks about the journey from finding the form till the client has all the details filled in and if there are issues. So the guide talks about and or touches upon every area. So what what are the, uh, uh, the details that it has? So it talks about information gathering, configuration and deployment management testing, identity management testing. If you've, uh, if you've realized that the form flow that I was talking about, it's the same flow that we have here. Like first of all, information gathering, whether the form exists or not. Then configuration and deployment management testing, whether uh, uh, what's the configuration, we've submitted the form finding the identities, uh, filling in the username and password. Now, this is just a framework. We can use it however we want. There, it's, like, it's not like that these, these test cases will be going in just one direction. We can tweak as per the need, as per the organization requirement. Now, if I have authenticated the user, um, authorize the user, I would know that, okay, this is the identity. Then we will be persisting the session. We will be doing the input validation. We'll be checking the uh, error handling or weak cryptography. Then we'll be checking uh, the client side issues. Now, there's one thing that we would also be doing is business logic testing, which we might skip or uh, which we might miss with the, the tools that we have. So it touches upon that area as well. Now, uh, when it touches upon all those areas, what is exactly inside it? What information it provides? I'm really um, curious about it. So it provides the summary about that particular test case that how we can do the information gathering, then how to test it, how to figure out if there is an authentication issue. What are the tools that can be used to figure out those details? And there are some references, white papers, or there are blogs which are attached to it so that you can go back and, okay, this is a use case that it was talking about. If I'm able to exploit, this is what happens to my application. Or this is the risk that can be there for my app. 